look, um, it is getting on to closer to 10 past nine. So um, we will start because um, thank you everyone for staying up to these wee hours. Uh, we really appreciate your time and we um, hope you enjoy the session that we do today. Um, again, I just want to say thank you for joining us. It's a mini master lesson in our English for Academic Purposes teacher training. Um, my name is Janelle. Um, I am the Business Development and Partnership Manager with the Centre for English Teaching, also known as CET. Um, we are recording today's presentation and it will be available for you to review. We'll send you a link after this. Um, I've put you all on mute and I've put your video to be turned off so we can reduce the bandwidth. Hopefully we won't run into any technical difficulties today. Um, this is an interactive class at which stage we will ask you to unmute your unmute, unvideo yourself, or you can use the chat function to participate. Okay, well thanks Lynn. If we can move on. Um, okay, so just a little bit about us. Uh, we are fully owned and operated by the University of Sydney and we established ourselves in 1988. We offer a comprehensive range of English language um, courses, but we also um, do academic skills for students going on to do their degree programs. And we do professional development such as this one for English language teachers. Um, we have approximately 4,000 students per year and our peak period is between October and February. Um, and we have over 100 teaching staff. Thanks, Luke. Right, I um, have the great pleasure to introduce our team. Firstly, Elizabeth Jamarco, also known as Lisa. Lisa is our Acting Education Manager in Graduate Programs. Lisa holds a Master of Arts in TESOL and has worked in a range of educational leadership roles here and abroad. Luke Alexander will be delivering the mini master lesson in teaching English for academic purposes. Luke's qualifications are a Trinity TESOL certificate Masters in Applied Linguistics, TESOL, and he is currently completing a PhD in Linguistics. Okay, well, that's it for me. I will now hand over to Lisa and she'll take you through the next couple of slides. Thanks, Luke. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Centre of English Teaching's webinar for the English for Academic Purposes Teacher Training Online course which as you probably already know, will start next month on the 23rd of June. It's really lovely to see you here with us today. And considering you're from all around the globe, I'd like to welcome you to Sydney, Australia. We hope you and your families are safe and well. In a moment, we hope to give you a really useful insight into this particular professional development program for the English language teaching community. At the end of the session today, you'll have time to ask questions out loud or via the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Thanks, Luke. I'd like to start by telling you a little bit about the type of teacher training courses we have available at CET and I'll then hand over to one of our master teachers and teacher trainer at CET, Luke Alexander. And he will provide you with a snapshot of the type of content that you'll be exposed to in this uh, EAP teacher training course online. Other than our EAP teacher training that you'll hear about today, we also deliver the teacher training units of study for the School of Education at the University of Sydney. And of course, we also offer our very popular English language teacher training online program, uh, which is a little different to this. Uh, it, it focuses on the principles of TESOL, really concentrating on a range of approaches and methodologies. 
At CET, we also customise teacher training programs for specific groups of individuals or organisations. So keep in mind, if you have a specific requirement in the field of English language teacher training, please communicate that to us so we can provide you with some of our program options. Thanks, Luke. Now, what about this EAP teacher training online program we're featuring today? Well, there are a number of benefits uh, that you will start to see as we take you through the course today. Uh, we know that it will, it will extend your teaching skills and knowledge into the field of English for academic purposes. And of course, it will help you apply current theory to teaching practice. It will provide an investment in your own professional development and certainly enhance your career prospects in the future. It's also, as you can see here, a recognised quality teacher training product globally. And it is endorsed as a premium product by the National English Language Accreditation Scheme. All right, I'd like to hand over now to Luke, our very experienced teacher trainer who will be taking this course. Luke. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, I've chosen today to talk about uh, stance uh, because stance is a really crucial part of academic writing and academic uh, language more broadly. Uh, and stance, when I talk about stance, I'm talking about when we need to take a position or when we need to take a stand in language. Um, and it happens in all language really, but it's particularly important, I think, in academic uh, writing and academic language more broadly. It goes by a number of different names. It's also been called evaluation and appraisal. And I think those terms also give us a sense of, of what stance means and what we need to do in stance in language. Um, but stance is, you know, the more common term that's used. Uh, and I think I've chosen stance as well because it, it presents a lot of problems for EAP uh, students. In academic language, we're, you know, we're asked to, on the one hand, be objective. On the other hand, we need to take stance. And that can be quite difficult for EAP students. I've had quite a few students ask me, well, how do I do this? How can I demonstrate my opinion, my position, but at the same time be objective in language? Um, so it's a very kind of fine balancing act for students, um, but it's a crucial skill to master. And I think it's a crucial skill for them to master because it's a key way of demonstrating critical thinking and critical thinking is one of the main kind of missions of, uh, you know, uh, university in general really isn't this no stance i think is is quite crucial i think and it's a tricky one for our students so let's have a look in a little more detail about what do i mean by stance exactly well um stance can take two main forms i think in uh academic language uh and the first one uh, is labeled epistemic stance and this is talking about how certain are we about what we know about things? Uh, how certain are we about what we're saying? Also, uh, how certain are we about what other people are saying? Obviously, a key part of academic language is using uh, other academic sources and the academic literature in your discipline. So we need to indicate, well, how certain are we about that as well as our own position? Also, how much evidence do we have for what we think? So epistemic stance uh, is, is one important form of stance that students will need to take uh, in academic language. The other one that they'll need to take, uh, the other form of stance rather, is attitudinal stance. And this is where we're saying more, do we think what we're talking about is a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, and this is where we get that sense of evaluation. What's our evaluation of, of what we're saying? Often we're asked to provide solutions in academic writing in certain parts or to evaluate certain uh, you know, modes of thought or action. So we need to kind of present our attitude, but we need to do it in a careful way where we still seem objective. So quite tricky. Let's now have a look at uh, these two main forms of stance and how they might show up in academic text. So I'm going to give you next some sentences. These are all taken from an academic business text, by the way. 
And I'd like you to look at these and I'd like you to tell me, are these examples of epistemic stance or attitudinal stance? And you can share your answers either just through the chat function or you can come on and unmute yourself and have a chat with me as well. So here's the first one, number one. Do you think this is an example of stance or attitudinal stance? Maybe say why as well. What do you think? Any thoughts? So I've indicated there the kind of stance marker uh, in English, which might show the stance. We've got there interestingly. Do you think this is showing attitude or how certain we are about things any thoughts about that don't be shy any thoughts it, it, Dita, exactly right it is attitudinal stance here i think it's showing Thank you very much, Dieter. So it's showing that, yeah, they think that this is, this is an interesting point. So it's a kind of attitudinal stance. Thank you. What about the next one? So here we've got May as being kind of the way of showing stance here. What do you think this one is? Is this uh, epistemic or attitudinal stance? Do you think this is indicating an opinion, an evaluation? Or is it showing how certain you are about something? Any thoughts there? What do you think? Christina? Dita? Kauri? Anyone? Riha? What do you think? Maybe people are too shy to say that no. It is indeed. Dita, thank you very much. It is indeed epistemic stance. It's saying, well, it may be true. Yeah, no, it may require flexibility. Get, they get a bit trickier, <laughs> trickier as you get along. About number three, it is essential. So that term essential, what do you think? Would that be epistemic or attitudinal? Is it showing how certain they are? Or is it showing maybe they think something's good or bad? Any thoughts there? Someone else, please. Dieter's doing all the work here. Can someone else help her out? Thank you. Uh, it is indeed, Reham, uh, it is indeed uh, attitudinal, it's saying that this is, this is, yeah, this is necessary. Last one's a bit, bit tricky as well. It's a very common way of showing stance. Levy claims. Any thoughts there? What do you think? Epistemic or attitudinal? What do you think? It is indeed epistemic, yes. So this is an example of where we're showing our stance towards other information sources. Fantastic, Rehab, thank you. So we've seen that it can take these two forms, epistemic and attitudinal. So they're kind of very broad categories. I guess as language teachers, we're interested, well, how can our students demonstrate this in language? And I've kind of got four main academic stance markers. So these are, so as I said before, demonstrating stance in academic English can be a bit tricky. We can't just, we can't use personal pronouns. We can't say, I think, uh, because we have to seem objective. So it's quite tricky. So some of the ways we do it is firstly through using modal verbs and semi-modal expressions. So we might say, uh, for example, um, you know, the, the conclusions might indicate, so the use of might, uh, is an example there. We might use have to as a semi-modal expression. So that's one way we can do it. Another common way in academic language is use of adverbs and adverbial phrases. We might say things like perhaps because of this or typically this form of automation does this. So that use of perhaps or typically use of adverbs and adverbial phrases, very common as well. Uh, the third one, um, we often show our stance through using reporting verbs. Um, so use of a reporting verb like uh, Lee writes can be very different from saying Smith claims or argues where we sound like we're not quite sure about what they're saying there. 
So use of reporting verbs is a third one. And finally, we can indicate it through use, just through use of certain uh, vocabulary lexes. We might see, for example, the company's decision threatens the bottom line. So that use of threatens certainly shows some attitudinal stance there. So there's some of the main ways in which uh, we can indicate stance in academic English. I'd like now to go back to the sentences that we looked at before, and I'd like you now to have a look and tell me which forms of stance markers are these. And I'll, I'll put them into the chat there. Um, so there we go. So I'd like you to identify what kinds of stance markers we can see in those sentences. Modal, semi-modal, adverbs, adverbial phrases, use of reporting verbs, or use of lexis. Probably best, seems like people are comfortable using the chat, so maybe you can just put the number and just tell me which one do you think it is. Let's look at maybe number one first. Which one is that? Exactly, yes. So this kind of, yeah, this kind of uh, fronted, uh, adverbial is, is can be quite common in academic text sometimes. And yes, exactly right, Riham. Number two is an example of, of modal verbs. Very common way, of showing, uh, particularly epistemic stance uh, in academic writing. Um, yep, great. What about number three? Which one's that? I'll, I'll give you a clue. There's one of each kind. So, so it's only going to be one of two. So we've already had adverb and we've had modal. So it's going to either be Lexus or reporting verb. Which one do you think it is? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so this is an example of Lexus. And this kind of little uh, semi fixed expression is a very showing sense. It is essential that, yeah, it is vital that. So that in itself, that construct is, is quite common. And yes, exactly right. Thank you, Christina. The last one is the use of reporting verbs. Um, Levi claims. So it sounds like maybe we don't agree with Levi. Maybe we disagree with him if we use the term claims. Fantastic, thank you. All right, so I'd like to just finish by looking at, well, how can we, how can we teach this? I think the main way and the, probably the, you know, I think, the best way is to text mine authentic text. So what I mean by that is we present our, our students with authentic academic texts uh, and we, we, you know, obviously we spend some time looking at, you know, the comprehension of the text and we scaffold that comprehension first. But then we can, once they've understood the text, we can then look at it for certain key terms and, and also the organisation of the text as well. So we might, for example, decide we want to just look at one of those. We want to look at adverbs or maybe Lexus. So we might get them, the students to find examples of that in the text firstly. So that's an example of text mining. We can then build on that and we can then do uh, what's termed writerly reading. So once we've mined the text for these key terms, we might then set them up as little sentence stems. So maybe in our text, we've got, it is essential that. So we then get our students to write another sentence beginning with, it is essential that. You know, and maybe we vary, it is vital that we ask them about different adjectives, for example. So that's another way we can do it. Finally, I think, you know, one of the key ways that we do this in EAD is feedback on student texts as well. So once we've introduced these terms uh, and they're familiar with some really structured kind of introduction of that, we then uh, have some feedback on those texts as well. And, and that's, I think, where the learning really takes place. So uh, I hope you got something out of that. Um, so yes, it's just a little example of, of what we'll do in the course. Um, so yes, next. Um, okay. Thanks, Luke. No worries. <laughs> Thanks very much, Luke. Um, I have to say that was really interesting. I've never looked at texts in that way before. And now I'm going to be reading things and wondering whether if that attitudinal or <laughs> et cetera. So thanks for taking us through that. Um, look, these in front of you at the moment, the, this is the entry requirements uh, for the course. Um, however, we do um, actually assess uh, applications on a case by case basis. Um, if you are interested in this course and you're not sure if you are eligible, 
please let us know in the chat or you can contact us. Um, I've got an email at the end of this uh, presentation and we can get in contact with you and um, have a look at um, uh, where you're at. Um, we also, we do, uh, uh, Lisa uh, alluded to this earlier, we do have another course called English Language for Teacher Training and that might, that might be more suitable to you. Um, thanks, Luke, if you can just move on. So just a quick um, overview of the course details. Um, if you're interested to do it, it's all online. Uh, the applications uh, and payment deadline has been extended to the 8th of June. Uh, the course will begin on the 23rd of June and it will finish on the 18th of August. So that's approximately nine weeks. Uh, there's one webinar um, and 30 minutes interactive tutorial per week. Um, and then you've got two to three hours of study and assignments, uh, assignment writing as well. Um, the fees are there, uh, so that's Australian dollars, uh, 720. Um, I did speak to Luke uh, earlier. Now, the webinar, if you miss it, is recorded and you can review it. And if I'm correct uh, in understanding this, Luke, the tutorials is twice a day or is it repeated? Yeah, different times to accommodate people in different time zones, yeah. Excellent. Um, thanks, Luke. Um, this comes to the end of our presentation with two minutes to spare. That's pretty good timing. Um, Elizabeth, uh, Lisa, is there anything you want to end with? Um, and also, is there any questions anyone has before we sign off for the day? Um, look, I'd be really interested to hear uh, if there are any questions. Um, this course, by the way, has always been an online course. It's not something that we have um, changed recently to online. Uh, of course, a lot of programs have been moved to online delivery mode just because of the current um, COVID-19 situation. But this course has always been delivered online and certainly Luke is an expert at delivering this, this particular program. Um, I'd be interested to know if it's the type of program that uh, those of you who are here, here with us today are interested in, or if there is another program uh, that we offer uh, online, if um, you, know, you could let us know what you're looking for at this moment. Are there any questions? It is quite late in some of those countries, Lisa. Yes. <laughs> I think, yes. Well, well I'll, I'll, if there's no questions now, um, we'll package this presentation up. We'll send it to you today uh, and hopefully Zoom will give me the link to the recording and we'll send that along to you. Um, you'll have our email address um, and you can contact us uh, if you'd like to know more information. And, that was lovely. Thank you, um, Dita. Fruitful webinar. Really enjoyed that. Okay. Yes. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you for joining us. And Christina, just um, a bit worried it would be too much having in mind my working teaching hours already. Oh, well, Christina, absolutely. See how, uh, if you've got more questions around the delivery of it, please just give us an email and um, we can um, talk you through it and show you a sample timetable. This is our third year running this, so we'll be no doubt running it again in the future. So, you know, if not this year, perhaps later. Yeah. It's all about um, furnishing the world with great teachers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. We'll be in contact with you very soon. Um, have a nice sleep wherever you are in the world. And, um, yes, please, don't, please feel free to contact us if you'd like to know more information. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. See you.